anything and everything. Do you ever wonder how to? Do you ever wonder why? About anything and everything. Then Doris is your guide. Anything and everything will open your mind. Anything and everything with Doris. Anything and everything with Doris is online. Remember. Remember. Anything and everything with Doris. You are listening to Anything and Everything with Doris podcast. This episode is brought to you by Affordable Creations VIP. Check us out on Facebook at Affordable Creations VIP. This episode is brought to you by WYSK Spark Radio, the spark of the South. Listen to hits from the 70s to now. Find it on Live 365 Spark Radio. Hello, everyone. I hope y'all had a blessed week. So last week, I talked about eating pink for breast cancer. I went over some pinkish types of food, not necessarily just for protecting against breast cancer. The food that we eat can protect us against many different cancers. But because October was, you know, think pink for breast cancer. I just wanted to do the first one about pink foods. You want to wear pink? Great. Eat pink too. But of course, that's not all the foods out there that are, you know, healthy for us that protect us against breast cancer or many other cancers. So this week, I wanted to touch on vegetables. There are quite a few vegetables out there that will protect us against cancer. While we know October is breast cancer awareness, I don't want to leave out other types of cancers as well. Because to me, cancer is cancer. I don't care what kind you have. We need to prevent from all of it. So while we are wearing our pink, we can also eat these other wonderful vegetables that will protect us from several different types of cancers, not just breast cancer. As we all know, the cancer treatments from traditional medicine, such as chemotherapy and radiation, can wreak havoc on our bodies, and many times it can be deadly. You know, many times the cure that we're trying to work with turns out to be more deadly than the cancer we're fighting or makes the cancer more deadly to us. And I want to talk about that today. Are there better ways to fight cancer more effectively? All I want to tell you is if it were me or my loved one, I would try everything. I wouldn't do just all natural or holistic. I wouldn't do just traditional. I would do it all. I would do everything I could. Everything that was, you know, I don't know if I would have to do chemo or radiation. It would depend on when it was found, how far, how quickly is it growing. But I would try every possible thing to save my life or my loved one's life. So please don't listen to this as she's talking about just holistic medicine, because she's not. I'm also talking about cancer prevention, so that you won't have to make those choices, hopefully. So please be aware that I would never advise anyone how to manage their illness, no matter how large or small of a diagnosis they receive. However, New research has suggested that there are other options out there that can be just as helpful. And that's what I want to do. I want to give you all of the options. You might choose one or the other. Or like me, you might say, I want to do it all. But at least you know it's there. Because so many people don't realize what's out there. So this is just other options available along with whatever else you want to do. Please be aware that these options are not to be used with or without other methods. That is totally up to the patient. The journal Cancer published a study where UCLA researchers showed that radiation makes breast cancer more malignant. 
While they did find that radiation kills nearly half of the tumor cells treated, they also found that radiation transforms other cells into induced breast cancer stem cells. Now, cancer stem cells make up less than 5% of a tumor, yet they can regenerate the original tumor. These new stem cells are up to 30 times more likely to form tumors compared to the cancer cells that didn't get radiation radiation. Cancer stem cells can also move through blood vessels, spreading cancer to other locations. Unfortunately, chemo works in the same manner. Chemo only kills the less harmful cancer cells. The cells left behind are the more lethal cancer stem cells that are resistant to traditional treatments. South Dakota State University researchers found that there is a compound found in cruciferous veggies like broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower that may be able to target those resistant cancer stem cells. It may even aid in preventing the recurrence and the spread of some cancers. This compound is known as phenethyl isothiocyanate or P-E-I-T-C. When researchers added this compound to a petri dish with human cervical cancer stem cells, nearly 75% of these stem cells died within a 24-hour period. Now, you can find this P-E-I-T-C in cruciferous vegetables. Studies have shown that it works strong as an anti-inflammatory and that it has chemopreventative activity against a range of other cancers as well. Cancers such as colon, prostate, breast, cervical, ovarian, and pancreatic. These same researchers were able to see how the PEITC compound slowed down the formation of cervical cancer stem cells in a dose-dependent manner. The PEITC was able to significantly reduce the reproduction of both the cervical cancer cells and the stem cells. Amazingly, this compound was comparable to the chemo drug selenomycin but without the toxic side effects. In fact, the effects of this compound was undoubtedly better in negating cervical cancer stem cell generation than the toxic chemo drug paclitoxel. The researchers came to the conclusion, and I quote, It is becoming increasingly evident that cancer treatment that fails to eliminate cancer stem cells allows the relapse of the tumor, end quote, and that, quote, importantly, PEITC is antiproliferative in both cervical cancer cells and cervical cancer stem cells, suggesting that it may contribute to eradication of cancer more efficiently than compounds targeting either cancer stem cells or regular cancer cells alone, end quote. The good news is that you don't need to wait for a new drug to reach the market to take advantage of the compound PEITC. The levels of this compound that researchers used in their study can be achieved by eating a diet filled with many cruciferous veggies. They were particular in recommending watercress. You should know that before this study from South Dakota State University, the British Journal of Nutrition and Biochemical Pharmacology published research showing that PEITC from watercress may suppress breast cancer cell development. They reported that a small group of breast cancer survivors ate a bowl of watercress and then had their blood tested within the next 24-hour period. They were able to find significant levels of this compound in the blood following the watercress meal. Other studies show that eating watercress and broccoli decreases the risk of breast cancer. Broccoli has also been shown to kill the stem cells that make cancer immortal. Here are some common cruciferous veggies that you can find in a supermarket near you. Arugula, bok choy, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, 
cabbage, cauliflower, collard greens, kale, mustard greens, radishes, rutabagas, and watercress. These vegetables have also been found to improve survival rates in ovarian cancer patients as well. They also contain another cancer protective compound called sulforaphane. Now, sulforaphane improves the liver's ability to detoxify carcinogens and other toxins. As mentioned in previous episodes, here are a few more foods that target cancer stem cells. Curcumin, which is found in turmeric and can target brain cancer stem cells, and when combined with piperine, which is found in black pepper, it aids in preventing breast cancer stem cells from regenerating themselves. Now, besides that, Adding black pepper to turmeric helps your body absorb the curcumin more efficiently. EGCG, which is found in green tea. It stops prostate cancer stem cells from renewing themselves and by combining quercetin, which is found in apples and onions, and stops cancer stem cells from traveling and invading into other tissues. So just like your mama told you, eating all of your veggies is important for healthy growth. So isn't it wonderful that if we eat right and we eat healthier foods, we're not just helping the levels of our energy or the iron in our blood or all these other things we need, but we're fighting cancer and colds and flu and other diseases. So the next time you're wondering, well, cancer runs in my family, I'm bound to get it, or what can I do? Just think about all these things that we could do to fight it. And if you are fighting cancer, please don't just give up. Don't just stop and say, well, I'm taking the chemo and the radiation. Eat all these other healthy foods as well. And prayer, lots of prayer. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I wanted to mention that my father died of cancer back in 1988. And at the time, it was considered a rare form of cancer. They had said they had never seen it in this part of the body before. Well, for his job, he had to go get a physical every year. So every January, he went and got his physical. Well, six months goes by. Now, he had a perfect bill of health every year. And about six months goes by and he notices a mole on his back and it had changed color and it had changed formation. And he knew enough about cancer to go get it checked out. And this was in 1986. So he goes and he gets it checked out and found out that from the time he got a perfect bill of health to six months later, he had a cancer. And it had grown so quickly and so aggressively that they were giving my dad six months to live. That's right, six months to live. Now, while my dad was healthy, he did smoke, but he ate very well. He ate his vegetables, he had his protein. Teen, you know, he ate healthy. My dad wasn't into eating junk food. I never saw him eating candy or chips. The most he had was maybe angel food cake and vanilla ice cream. And that would be on his birthday once a year. So he ate really well. The only thing that got him was the cigarettes. And he did say, he said, Doris, if you only listen to me, one thing I tell you, please don't ever start smoking because it is the hardest thing to stop. And I actually did listen to him and I don't smoke and I don't drink. But I will tell you this, my dad was a fighter and he fought. Now he wasn't into holistic medicine. So all he had was traditional. He continued to eat healthy, but he took a lot of chemo and a lot of radiation. But from the doctors in 1986, giving this man six months to live, he fought for two years and he gave it a good fight. And the only thing that I think about a lot is even though my dad ate healthy, he ate food very plain 
The only spices that my father put in the food was salt and pepper. He said that when you put other spices in the food, it covers up the natural flavor of the food, and he liked the natural flavor. So while he did eat healthy and he ate his vegetables and and got his protein from different types of meat, and he had, see, every night we ate rice instead of mashed potatoes. Every Friday we ate fish. You know, for the most part, we ate well. But I love Look back and I think, you know, Dad, if maybe you had added those healthy spices to the food, maybe you wouldn't have got cancer or maybe your body would have been able to fight it better. So I think about that a lot and I don't like my food bland. I grew up in Louisiana. I grew up as a little girl eating bland food because that's how my mother cooked it. But then when I started going out and eating at other people's houses in Louisiana, I found out there's flavor. And so I cook that way. And I eat lots of onion and garlic and turmeric and black pepper. And one of the things I've said in an earlier episode, and I've talked about it in blogs, there's one thing that I make sure I do, and I add it to everything that I eat. I take a shaker, just get any shaker, any shaker that you want to put your salt and pepper in, just grab an extra one and take turmeric and put a third of turmeric in it, a third of garlic. Now the real garlic, not the garlic salt, the real garlic powder, and then a third of black pepper. And then shake it up really, really well. Because the black pepper helps the turmeric or the curcumin that's in the turmeric to work better with your body. And garlic Along with all the other properties that these three ingredients have, garlic's good for, you know, the blood. It's good for keeping parasites out. If you look up those three ingredients, you'll see the amazing properties they have. Just sprinkle every day those three ingredients together in your food. And that in itself will help. So that's just my little tip of the day. For more information on today's topic, check the references in the show notes. And also, you can find other topics similar on my blog. Go to www.yapistudio.com. Thank you for listening. God bless. And that's our show. Thanks for listening. And until we meet again, enjoy every day to its fullest. God bless. For comments or questions, you can reach us by email at yappy at post.com. Also, check us out on Twitter at Dorisi and our Facebook pages at Yappy Studio or Louisiana Entertainment Association. Anything and Everything with Dorisi is produced by Your Own Production Incorporated and comes out every week. So come on back. Feel free to add us to your favorite RSS feed and iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Pod, and our favorite, Podbean. All links are found in our show notes below. Mm-hmm.